I start my day with love, when I start my day with love, that's what I get more of, is love. I start my day with love, when I start my day with love, that's what I get more of, is love. Love, 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 love. I start my day with peace when I start my day. I'm Reverend Patty Williams, and it is truly my joy to welcome you to Unity of Salem's online Sunday service. Shall we join together in prayer? Mm, sweet, sweet spirit, as we connect together heart to heart, 
we know we are one beyond any sense of time of place that right here, right now in this moment, we acknowledge our connection and we come together with joy, with love, hearts open and we give thanks for we are grateful for this day and so much more. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth and I am your platform assistant today. I have a few announcements to share with you. And if you have questions or would like any more information about any of these announcements, please contact the office. Weekdays, Monday through Thursday at 11 a.m., we have a sacred gathering with daily prayer check-in. Especially during these uncertain days, it is important that we join together and hold the high watch. The link to the gathering is in our weekly email and in announcements on our community Facebook group. We are looking to hire a part-time bookkeeper for the church. If interested, please send your resume to the office. On Monday, June 22nd at 6 p.m., we are holding a one-hour prayer vigil. You can join us wherever you are or online using Zoom, the, the Zoom link that will be in our weekly email and on our Facebook website. Join us for Sunday Coffee Talk right after the service today. It begins approximately 11.30 a.m. This is hospitality time for anyone who would like to join in and connect with each other via Zoom. The link was in our, e our weekly email, and we will post it in the event feed for those watching Sunday morning on Facebook. We now join together in affirming our Unity of Salem mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth in inclusive, loving community. And our vision statement, centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy. And our core values are inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. I now invite Jim up to share the word for, for today. Good morning. The word of the day is open doors. Through Christ in me, every door to my good is opened. What do we believe about life? Do we believe that some door to our good is closed? Do we find ourselves thinking and saying, these are hard times? For every door is closed, or do we feel that life is meant to be good? Do we know that through the Christ in us, every door to our good can be opened? Christ in us is the door through which we enter the Father's good kingdom. Each time we unify ourselves in prayer with the Christ indwelling, we are strengthened in our belief that God is good. If one door seems closed, another door can and will open. If we are contemplating change, the return to school, new employment, marriage, relocation of our home, retirement, we can be sure that the Christ in us will make possible the opening of every door that needs to swing wide. Courageously, joyously, we can approach each day with confidence, knowing that there are no closed doors that our good awaits us. I am the door, John 10:9. They can draw lines in the sand, try to separate the land, but they can't carve borders in my heart. And they can preach a small story, 
limited to blood for glory but they can't take the universe from my heart look beyond the illusions break the chains and take Last week, we began a series talking about the power of, of myth, especially in the Harry Potter series, and looking at Harry as a contemporary version of what Joseph Campbell called the hero's journey. 
And we began exploring the story metaphysically, um, looking at how each character, each place, each, each, everything in the story can represent some aspect of our own consciousness, of who we each are. And that that story is about us awakening. You know, that's what the hero's journey is about, about us awakening to the truth of who we are and, and starting in our own spiritual evolutionary process. And quite frankly, that's what myth is all about. It transcends time, it transcends space, and it's all about traveling into deeper parts of ourselves. So that's the invitation today, is that you join me in traveling a little bit deeper. And we're going to focus on Harry Potter again um, and know that the themes that come over time and time and time again in this story is the power of love to transform evil. Now, I said that last week and I got calls from several of you really wanting to understand a little bit more what evil is about. Um, and since it's something that we'll come into quite frequently during this series, especially as Harry gets further and further along in his evolutionary process, let's start that dialogue now. It su suffice to say that I'm not referring to a power other than God. We know that there is only one presence and one power. However, we're here in a human experience and we have the freedom to choose, to choose to misuse that power. And when we do, we create a temporary experience. We create something that appears to be other than God, and we give it our power. It's not eternal. It's not love. It's actually based on fear, something that is temporary and can be overcome. You know, unity through Charles Fillmore, one of our co-founders, is really focused on the idea that evil is, maybe the word you could use is ignorance. That's what Charles would have called it. It's not a power separate from God. It's a perceived power. You know, it's something that um, gains strength from our collective ignorance of the truth of who we are. And it doesn't matter that it's temporary. It, it appears to have power over us. And that becomes a formidable challenge to us here in this human experience. And it's our job to deal with that, to deal with that, to transform that, um, that which is based on our physical senses. You know, we're here, spiritual beings having a human experience. So our job is to become more and more expressions of that spiritual being. And then the hero's journey becomes about remembering the truth, the capital T, truth of who we are, and choosing differently here in this realm, here in this world. Um, it's about appealing to all of us to wake up, to wake up on the journey that we are walking. It's not about walking another journey. Wake up right here, right now, right where we are. One of the first times we witnessed in this series, Harry Potter consciously choosing um, differently is when he's at the train station. And he's on his journey to Hogwarts, um, which last week we talked about representing that, that school of learning, that, that life is a school of learning. And he is dropped off with a ticket from Hagrid that says he needs to find platform nine and three quarters. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a platform at a train station that has a fraction for a number. However, I better explain to those of you who may not have watched the movies or read the books um, that Hagrid drops him off with this ticket and he's walking through this station and standing between platforms nine and 10 with 10 minutes left to get on his train trying to figure out where he's going and no one around him seems to understand what he's trying to do when this family walks up and starts talking about platform nine and three quarters. So of course his ears pick up and he starts watching them and seeing what they're doing and they just start running their carts that they're pushing right into a brick wall 
and disappearing. Well, that caught his attention. However, he couldn't understand while no one else around him couldn't see what was happening. Because as we talked about last week, with muggles, they're not awake to the truth. And no matter what's happening around them in regards to magic, their senses are telling them that that can't be possible. So it's as if they don't see it. However, Harry starts interacting with Mrs. Weasley, and it's her children who are headed off to Hogwarts. And, and I want to mention, there are no coincidences when we're on the spiritual journey. It's not a coincidence that the Weasleys showed up right when they did at the right and perfect place and at the right and perfect time. It's not a coincidence that Harry had the courage to ask them for help. You know, Mrs. Weasley, who is the mother of Ron and, and these other children who become part of the story, um, represents to me that energy of nurturing faith. Because in the story, I would say Ron Weasley um, represents the power of faith. And, and Harry turned to her. He was attracted by that nurturing energy. And what she said is, all you have to do is walk straight at the barrier. Don't stop and don't be scared. You'll crash into it. That's all you have to do. I'm sure we could all feel the fear of what that would feel like to, to be asked to do that. And yet Harry's being called not to make decisions based on his five senses. It was so far outside the realm of possibility that he just said yes. Everything else that had been going on was working out. So he said yes, and she, Mrs. Weasley, helped him to place his faith in the seeming impossible. And he succeeded in making it to his train on time with some newfound friends. To do it, he had to be willing to move through his fears. He was alone in a strange place, not knowing what to do. And he was willing to run into a solid brick wall. Don't we all have brick walls in our life? Things that seem like they're blocking us from the highest good. We talked about some of them in the, the Daily Word today. Things that stop us from doing the things that we would love to do. Those closed doors that keep us from being who we want to be. What if the brick walls were there not to keep us out? It didn't keep Harry out. But they were there to keep others out. They were there to keep those who are not awake to the new possibility and to give us the chance to decide who we really want to be, to give us the chance to step outside of outside influence and truly look within and see what's keeping us from our highest good, to see what's keeping us from living our heart's desire and choose differently so that we can walk through them with ease and with grace. And all we need to do is change our perception. Harry was pretty clear he wanted to get to Hogwarts. He was open to being transformed by the school of life. And despite perceived blocks, he found the way to achieve his goal, his intention. You know, we have, all have tools to tap into that magic within each and every one of us, to tap into that Christ light, that Christ presence, so that we can move through the brick walls in our life. So the question becomes, are we going to place our faith in fear or love? Where are we going to put those tools into practice? I believe that the Course in Miracles says everything is a call for love. So what if we made the commitment to see fear as a call for love, as a call to do something different in our life and choose love, choose our highest good? There's a lot of making that choice in this series of books. Some of you may remember that Charles Fillmore has an acronym for fear, and that's false evidence 
appearing real. Platform nine and three quarters is a perfect example of false evidence. And it appeared real to everyone else except those who were headed to Hogwarts. When we encounter the barriers in life that appear to be keeping us from our good, we give power to those barriers, don't we? Just by focusing our energy on them, we strengthen them. What if we chose to see beyond them, to see ourselves on the other side? And then we can pass through them, over them, around them, under them. We can create that experience to find all that we desired was already there. We do not have to be afraid of fear. It's a natural part of our lives. It's a natural part of the human experience. And it is the tool to show us where our boundaries are, where our growing edge is, so that we can consciously choose to push those boundaries and follow the guidance of our heart. Placing our faith in love is always more powerful than fear. One is based on truth, capital T truth, and the other is based on false evidence. Yes, I'm encouraging us to break through perceived barriers. Individually and collectively, it's time. I'll say it over and over and over again. You've heard me say it. We are the ones. We are the ones. Now is the time. However, there's one real important thing that I want to talk about. And that's letting the things of our past hold us back. That's one of the first barriers that Harry has to get through in one of his trials or challenges. And it shows up in the, the mirror of Erised. And I'm not 100% sure I said that correctly. I do know that the word is desire spelled backwards. And in this mirror is reflected back to you the deepest desires of your heart. So when you look into it, you see more than just yourself. And so when Harry looks into it, he sees a perfect family. He sees his parents. He sees all of those who have gone before him. And he discovers that that's what he wants, that that's what he is pining for. And he finds this mirror in a very unused part of Hogwarts. So he is able to spend all of his time sitting in front of this mirror. It becomes an obsession to him. And he starts sliding deeper and deeper into the illusion of making that his real experience. Sound familiar? Life is an illusion. You know, Professor Dumbledore, who I would say represents divine wisdom, had to intervene in the process. He let Harry know that when we are pining for something in the past, we are keeping ourselves from being free. We are keeping ourselves from the opportunity to create what is really the deepest desire of our heart. And what is that? To know our oneness, to experience God. That's what the school of life is all about. And we have to access our own divine wisdom to guide us on that journey to the highest good. And guess what? Just like Dumbledore had Harry's back, divine wisdom has our back. Harry is more awake the next time he runs into this mirror. The divine wisdom has become part of his story. And when he battles with Professor Correll, and Professor Correll is looking into this mirror, the professor sees the Sorcerer's Stone. And he was obsessed with possessing that stone. And he couldn't have it. He could not figure out a way to access that stone. And yet he knew it wasn't with him, but it was right there. So he started sliding in to that same experience that Harry was having. However, Harry, who walked up into this experience and looked into the mirror, <coughs> excuse me, 
was not obsessed with the stone. He had no desire to abuse it. He had no desire to possess it. So when he looked into the mirror, the stone miraculously just appeared in his pocket. And all of a sudden, now the professor could not see it. It disappeared. And the professor tried to get the stone from Harry. He realized where it was. And when he touched Harry, his hands disintegrated. Eventually, the rest of him disintegrated. And what we are told by Dumbledore, who again is wisdom, is that Corel lived in fear so that the power of love was too great for him. Again, seeing fear as a call for love. Love will disintegrate and transform fear into a new possibility. And at this point, Harry is truly able to look in the mirror without obsessing. And when that happens, healing happens. He moves beyond his grief, his grief for his parents. And he comes into the realization that even though they are no longer with him in person, they are in his heart. That love will always be a part of him. You know, metaphysically, I'd say that his parents represent his thoughts and feelings in the story. That which creates our life experience. And for so long, we are controlled by them. And as we wake up, they transform into being on our team. And even in the face of fear, which Harry faces quite frequently throughout this book, at, or these stories at very increasing levels, he transforms his thoughts and feelings. His awareness of his parents starts transforming in ways that support him at even greater and greater depths because he is choosing love instead of fear. When we are aligned with the one presence and one power, magic happens. And I don't think there's a much more important message for us right now. It's time that we looked into the mirror and said, we've been here before. And maybe we're pining for a lost dream. Maybe history shows it's never going to happen again. Hear that? Do you maybe have that going on in your conscious awareness? What if we were to let that go and truly embrace the truth, the capital T truth, that now is the time, that now is the time to choose love, to be love. The love we are talking about is powerful and it cannot be contained. So let's look to today. Let's look forward. Let's live in love. And there we have the power to overcome any difficulty or any challenge, any trial or tribulation. So how do we know when we are living in love? We desire the best for all. No matter race, cult culture, lifestyle, belief, we desire the best for all. We walk with each other. We live unconditional love. And that's our highest purpose in having this human experience is truly to learn to be expressions of unconditional love. And there's a bucket load of fear energy out there that it would be easy for all of us to tap into in the collective consciousness. And it's hard not to be impacted by it. It's hard to choose differently. And yet it's false evidence. It's not real. And what if we named it and claimed it as fear? That's when we can choose differently. That's when we can choose love. That's when we can know that it is a temporary illusion and it's not truth. We can place our faith in transforming it and bringing forth the highest good. Because when we ignore it, we empower it. In order to face his fear, Harry had to cross into the world of the unknown. He had to let go of everything he thought he knew. And in doing that, he had to know he was safe and secure. 
So are you willing to join me in stepping into the unknown? Are you willing to join those of like mind and stepping out of our comfort zone and truly being love? Let's explore that in, in a time of meditation. I invite Angela to join me in bringing in some music to help us on this journey. And as we begin, I invite you to close your eyes, to take a few deep breaths. And as you focus on your breathing, check your body for any tension. As you exhale, let your body relax. Relax into the chair that you are sitting on. As you surrender to an awareness of the flow of spirit moving through you right now. And as you become attuned to this flow, to the love of God moving through you, allow your mind to be at peace. This love is ever present. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. It is within you. It is all around you. It is your sanctuary at all times. And it is embracing you right now. And in this embrace of love, I invite you to hear these words coming from deep within your heart. I am confident that I am divinely loved and cared for, that my life is following a divine plan. With my heart open to God, I now turn within and affirm that divine love is my source of peace, of strength, of wisdom. I rest in this awareness of God's love and I release any doubt or concern. I concentrate only on divine love. As together we now enter into a time of silent prayer filled with gratitude for the loving wisdom that blesses our lives in the silence. Thank you, Spirit. As we bring our awareness back to this place, to this time, we remain open to your guidance. And with grateful heart, we return to wherever our physical bodies are. And we open our eyes refreshed and renewed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen.
And now is the time in our service we have an opportunity to share of our financial gifts and bless those gifts that come into this community through our website, through the mail, that come in however they come in, both financial gifts and the gifts of service that make a difference in us being able to do the work that is ours to do, to be the spiritual community that we are here to be. If you would join me in knowing that we send these gifts forward with wisdom, with joy, as we affirm our offertory blessing. Divine love flowing in, through, and as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. We would also like to hold in prayer those whose names are in the prayer box you will see in front of me, as well as those whose names might be in our hearts. We invite you to add those names using your imagination to the names already present, to the names of those who have reached out to this community as we join together in prayer. Sweet, sweet spirit, we know that there is one presence and one power that there is nowhere that you are not already at work, calling forth the highest good. And as we send light and love to each of these individuals, we know that they are safe and secure, that all things are unfolding to bring forth peace, health, wholeness, prosperity, and abundance of blessings. And that in this moment, there is more than enough love to send around this planet to any sense of dis-ease or discomfort to call forth order in the midst of any seeming chaos. For we believe with God, all things are possible and we hold thoughts of peace, of joy, of oneness throughout this planet. And we give thanks for answered prayer as we pray this in the name and through the nature of the living, loving Christ presence. Amen.
And now we close this service knowing that we are each and every one of us safe and secure in arms of love. Shall we affirm together our prayer for protection? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And truly, all is well. Blessings always. <laughs>